he cannot equate her to anything, anything he desires. Because she is more than anything he can ever desire. She Hi, my YouTube channel, family. Welcome back. Today, our topic is uh, who is she? Welcome. Mm. Before I embark on who is she, um, I would like to say something so that we can be able to understand where I am getting at and why I have picked the name she. First and foremost, we need to understand um, this is just kind of a repetition for those who have not uh, who have not actually started from the start where we started the teachings about the women and I may maybe I should repeat why this YouTube channel was made. It was in line with um, much of a woman. How much has been said? God's mindset towards the woman, God's thinking when He created the woman. What did he actually mean? Who is the woman? Spiritually and physically, who is the woman? Spiritually and physically, who is the man? Spiritually and physically, what is this union of marriage? So that by the time a man and a woman are coming together, they clearly understand both spiritually and physically who they really are. And this union of marriage they have come into, what is it all about? Because as I said, I have a favorite chapter, which I normally say my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because of lack of knowledge, we can see that one of the major reasons why marriages have failed or are failing or are continuing to fail is as a result of lack of knowledge, is as a result of not even defining who, like for instance, myself, me, the woman, who am I? The man, who is he really before he even gets to unite with a woman and create this beautiful thing called marriage. So today's topic is uh, who is she? We would really need to understand who the woman is. And today I'm not even going to focus on the woman. I'll, I'm using as, um, I'm using she. And she is the woman. She is a wife. She is a young lady growing up. But now I want to use who is she? Let us define who she is. And before we start, I would like to say, I need to first and foremost um, revisit who God is. Because as we go on, you'll understand even the scriptures that I'm going to use. Um, we really need to understand first and foremost, either to be reminded, to know for the first time, or to be reminded who God is. We are either reminded, we either do not know, so we are knowing for the first time, or we just need, I need to re-emphasize who God is. First and foremost, we know um, the God of the Bible, the God of the Bible, the God who we serve, the creator, O God of all creation, the one who created the things that we know and knoweth not. God, he's known as God the Father. God the Father abides in heaven. And... Um, in accordance to our Bible, in John 1, 14, the word of God, which is God himself, the voice or the word that God speaks, God the Father, became flesh and came and dwelt among us, who was Jesus Christ. So God the Father uses his word, which is Jesus Christ. It came and became flesh. And later God had to go back. And when the word of God left, Jesus, the word of God, told us, I am leaving another one of the same kind, like me, Alos Parakratos, another one of the same kind, who will be in you and with you till the end of time. Who is this? The power of God. Holy Spirit of God is the power of God. So God the Father, the word of God, who is Jesus Christ, and then the Holy Spirit of God, which is the power of God. Now the three are one, and the three are limitless. Remember, God exists outside creation. He is the creator. So he exists outside creation. He can be in creation and he can exist outside creation because he is God. So we cannot, I normally say that we will spend eternity trying to decipher or to understand who God actually is. So this I needed to bring to your attention again or to bring to your remembrance again to really understand of a thumb and understand who God is 
really is. So God the creator is limitless. Let's start with there. God the creator exists outside creation. So we are talking of God the father. His word is also limitless. Remember, because there's somewhere I'm getting the word of God also, which is God, which I've just defined. Jesus Christ is the word of God, who is God himself. It's also limitless. It doesn't matter whether it is in the Bible, in the volumes of the book. First and foremost, whatever is written from Genesis to Revelation doesn't mean that that was the end of God speaking. God is always speaking. God will continue speaking. Even this particular moment, God is still talking. The thing is, do we listen? Do we understand when he's speaking? So God is always speaking, but also that which he is speaking is limitless. That which we cannot as human beings begin to, dis to make anyone understand the, the limitation or this is the end, this is what God meant. In a particular scripture, somebody will come with a revelation of what this particular scripture God meant. Then tomorrow, another one will come up and say, this is what this scripture means. So what does that tell you? Revelation is progressive, which is the word of God. So we cannot put a tab stop. We cannot put an end. We cannot put a full stop to the word of God. We cannot say this is the only thing that this word of God means. So that is why I needed to bring us to remembrance of who God is. God is limitless. His word is limitless. His power is limitless. His word, Jesus, is limitless. His power, the Holy Spirit of God, who is in us, with us, round about us, till the end of time, is limitless. So with that kind of mindset, now we can embark in defining who she is. And I will take you first to Genesis. So that now we can attach, we can at least begin from the beginning and clearly start now to understand from where I'm starting now of defining who God really is and bringing our mind into a realization bringing our mind into a realization that the word of God is limitless that we cannot put a full stop to it, that we cannot just say this is what it really means. Now we need to go back to the origin where the mindset of God is so that we can start now understanding what really, who is she? Because remember the title of our topic is who is she? So Genesis 1, 26 and 27, and God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them now, um, let's start again. And God said, let us make man in our own image. What is in our own image? To look like us, after our likeness, to function like us. So God is telling, God is not alone. We can say maybe it was God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or God was with his angels, but God was not alone. So he, he But I don't think he was actually saying, the God and his angels. He was saying him. And now because we know the three in one is God, by the end of the day, God is one. But now he's saying, let us make man in our own image to look like us, to function like us. Because that's also, I felt if I start um, going towards that direction, I will not focus, uh, I'll get out of the topic. So let us now focus on the topic where we are talking of God is saying, let us create man in our own image, to look like us, to function like us, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Let them have. So he's creating man, and man, they are two, it's not one. Yeah, we will see. Because he has said, let them, not let him. Because as for those who now have been listening um, to the teachings that you have had in this platform, you'll understand that it's very key and important to understand every detailed word that is written in the word of God because we might miss the, to understand, we might miss the mark that we were meant to understand. So here, God is creating man, but when this man is being created, is not one. There are two. You understand? Because he's saying, let, us, let them have dominion. Let them. Let us create man in our own image to look like us, 
after our likeness to function like us and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and all and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so let them have dominion over everything and anything God has created. Let them. And so God created man. So what? God created man in his own image to look like him. In the image of God created he, him, male and female. Now you understand the word too. So these two, male and female, were created to look like God and to function like God. And I know I on, the, on my previous um, teachings, we've had this discussion lengthy, but it was prudent for me to start off with this scripture from Genesis so that now you can understand. Because if we are, we are going to define she, you need to understand she has been created in the image to look like God and to function like God. And meaning... Um, Okay, let me stop there. We'll, we will. Uh, there's something I needed to comment that I feel we need. Af uh, I need to comment after another scripture. So the female and the male were created to look like God and to function like God. That's what Genesis 1, 26, 27 is saying. Now I will take you again as I reemphasize. Like I'm reemphasizing again on the the previous scripture that I've just said. Genesis 5, 2. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called them Adam in the day when they were created in Genesis 1 when God said let us create man yeah so he created male and female to look like God and to function like God so now here we are not going to focus more on the male we are or he we are going to focus more on the she and now you understand also she just as he has been created to look like God and to function like God. Um, as we continue, I need you to also now understand the roles between the male and the female. For those who have not gone through the previous uh, teachings, maybe you'll catch up later, but I just need to, I need you to understand now as we progress from where I am now, you need to understand that yes, male and female are created in the image of God to look like God and to function like God. But sometimes what define us, what, what brings the difference or what completes these two who have become one flesh is the roles that God mandated each and every one of them to be, do, or become. Because the male has different roles and the female has different roles. And so even in their creation, even as they have been created to look like God and to function like God, they have different roles. And that is where now the difference comes between the male and the female. And that is why on my previous teachings, I have kept re-emphasizing that it's important for each and every one of them to step up into their roles, their God-given roles, in accordance to the will, purpose, and mission of God to be completed and perfected to become one. Because for this body to function, for this body not to have deformity, when they come or when they come as one, everyone should clearly understand their roles. Everyone should clearly understand who they really are and what their roles are. So um, let's go to Proverbs 3, 13 to 18. And the reason why initially I said that uh, God is limitless is actually because of this particular scripture. There is no knowledge, man knowledge now, let me bring in man knowledge or wisdom or um, that any created being can try to explain the scripture. Or for me, I tend to shy away from a person who will, um, who will teach or preach or give a scripture and tend to put a full stop on it. Like the revelation that God has given me in line with John 3.16 is the only revelation. For me, I will shy away from such teachings because I believe that the scriptures are progressive. The scripture has no end, has no limit. Because this word that we are teaching 
is God himself, as I had just said earlier. So you cannot limit God. God exists outside creation. So you cannot uh, box him into creation with your knowledge to try and tell us that what now Catherine is teaching you is all that is in line with Genesis 1, 26 to 27. No, this is just one angle, one view of that scripture. But we can never exhaust it. We will never exhaust it. But because today, in line with the topic of today of who is she, now you'll understand that these scriptures in line with defining or trying to understand the she. Yeah. So let us go to Proverbs 3, 13 to 18. I want to bring you now another version or another revelation in line with defining she from the book of Proverbs 3, 13 to 18. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. So here at the beginning first, the key words I need you to note is they didn't say happy is the woman. They said happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. 14. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. Because now happy is the man who gets wisdom. Because the wi this wisdom, when this man gets wisdom, is far much better than silver, than gold, than any merchandise any man can get. That's what it's saying. Now look at 15. You see here we have been told happy is the man. So there are things that I need you to underline. Happy is the man. Who finds wisdom? Wisdom is better than silver and gold or maybe property, if we may say. So 15. She is more precious than rubies. So who is wisdom? She. And that is why we are being told happy is the man. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou casted desire are not to be compared unto her. That she is more precious than anything a man can desire. This she, and in Proverbs now, this she has been defined as wisdom. And remember the title of the topic is defining she. So she is wisdom. She is more precious than silver and gold. She is more important, precious than rubies, and all the things a man can desire. This is she. We continue. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. So we are defining the woman. We will find life in the woman length of days is in her right hand and in her left riches and honor and you see that's why she is more precious than those riches and honors than silver and gold than rubies because in her she is already and for those who have um, gone on my previous teachings you'll begin now to connect the dots and you'll begin also to understand now keenly who the woman is She's actually wealth in, it, in herself. So length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. 17. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her path a peace. So in she there is pleasantness and there is peace. So happy is the man who finds the she because in her there is pleasantness. And there is peace. And he cannot equate her to anything. Anything he desires. Because she is more than anything he can ever desire. She is more than the wealth. She is more than the riches. She is more than um, the gold, the silver, the rubies, the precious. Anything precious and important that anyone would deem important. And especially a man would deem important. The she is more important. She is above all that. 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. 
and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Now, the she is a tree of life. That when you find the she, she's actually life to you. She's a life giver. When she comes in the life of this man, she's a life giver. And happy is the one who finds her. So in short, because I said revelation is progressive and in line on defining who she is, you will see that in Proverbs, and I know there's so much teachings and people will use many things defining the book of Proverbs. I know for those who theologians and all. But now when we are trying to define, because I said we should not ignore the reason why God uses specific words. God uses specific things. You will see in some instances, God has equated a woman to a ruby. You need to define what a ruby is. You need to understand why God created gemstone, precious stones. What are their roles? Why were they created? What are they really? So when God calls somebody by a name, a tree of life, what is God saying? When God says wisdom is a she, not a he, why not a he? Why is God saying happy is the man? Why not happy is the woman who finds wisdom? And you see, he's saying happy is the man. And then he calls who finds wisdom. And then he says wisdom is she. So in Proverbs, you'll start understanding or you will start defining who she is really. What do I say? Um... What is the seed that has given birth to the she? Or what uh, we are normally told our DNA carries everything about us. So what is the she's DNA? What um, if I need to understand who she is? What, who is she really? Okay, she, her DNA is wisdom. Her DNA is life. Her DNA is pleasantness. Her DNA is peace. She's priceless because you're being told she's far much better than gold silver rubies and anything any man can desire so we have not even started scratching the surface of who she is and remember she is created in the image to look like god to function like god and god is limitless so what comprises of her this is just but a beginning of defining who she really is really understanding who she really is which seed is this which dna is this okay so let's go to proverbs again 7 4 say unto wisdom thou art my sister let's stop there because what i was trying to make you understand as we define she wisdom is a female feminine wisdom is she wisdom is a sister Wisdom is a woman. Wisdom is a wife. This is her true definition. This is her true character. So anything, however you may want to define wisdom, is actually the character, the nature, the look-alike of a she. Let's go to Proverbs 9, 1 to 6. Wisdom has builded her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has killed her beasts. So you'll see wisdom, where you find she, where you find wisdom, she builds her house. She has hewn her seven pillars, meaning that this house, this building that wisdom has built is fortified. She has hewn her seven pillars. This building cannot be brought down. She has killed her beast. Anything that tries to attack her house, she has slayed the beast. That is wisdom. She has killed her beast. She has mingled her wine. She has also furnished her table. Wisdom is a homemaker. Wisdom has fortified her home. Wisdom has removed any threat that comes to threat her home, to threaten her home. She has furnished her table, meaning what? She has prepared a table for her. She has mingled her wine, meaning that 
um, let's say because we are talking, this, this channel is in line with the union of marriage. So I will say that um, she has mingled. She has mingled her wine. She has also furnished her table. That the man of this home, of this house, will never be hungry, will never be thirsty. He's well taken care of by wisdom. She, she has sent forth her maidens. She cried upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come eat of my bread and drink of my wine, which I have mingled. So you will see everywhere wisdom is is um ident is what is defined there is always a him who is being called who is being attracted who is being told come and you'll find rest here come and settle come eat come rest this one is uh, deeper because um, we have so many avenues of defining what wisdom is actually saying here in terms of the union of marriage. Because from the table to the bedroom, wisdom is perfect in her making. Her creation, her true definition, her true nature has been created by God to satisfy all around it, everything and anything. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. So when you find she, when you find wisdom, there is no foolishness. And as I said from the onset of this YouTube channel, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see now, if you start defining the she, you'll understand there is, there is no room for foolishness because the she will become her true nature. The she will mature to be exactly what she was created or God's intention or what her seed represents because you can only become that which you already know you are. Um, there are many things we are and we are still trying to understand ourselves. And the more we get to understand ourselves, the more we become that which we are already. It's not that after we realize who we are is when we become or it is when it is given or it is when it is when it is created. It's already is. It's already there. We only need to discover and become. So now we are now beginning to understand who the she is. And once for those who do not know who they are, they get to know, they become. And it is so easy to become that which you are already because it's already inbuilt in you. It's not something foreign or new that is being created or being brought for you to become or start functioning in it. You are already that wisdom. You are already that which God predestined, created you to become, to look and to function. So once you understand in wisdom, then you become, then you become, you, you start functioning in line to what you are already. So let's go to the book of Acts 2, 2 to 4. And suddenly, um, I'm bringing the book of Acts so that you can understand the true um, manifestation of wisdom. Because we have already been told wisdom is she. So now we need to at least break down what this wisdom is to clearly, to get a better and a clear understanding who she is. Acts 2, 2 to 4, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So I need, to, you need to understand two things here. A mighty rushing wind that filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of a fire. So I need you to understand the Holy Spirit of God's nature, one, is like wind, 
to fire and it sat upon each and every one of them and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterances so now here in this chapter in line with the topic of today i want you to capture only two things the nature of the holy spirit of god and there is a reason why i've taken you to the holy spirit of god in the next um in, in the next uh, scripture, you'll understand where we are going. So now in the book of Acts, we are understanding the nature of the spirit of God is like wind and there is fire in it. Now let's go to Acts 1.8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and Anne and to the uttermost part of the earth. So in this, in line with the topic of today, there, there are three characters or natures of the Holy Spirit of God we have seen. Wind, fire, and power. So Acts 1.8 is defining the Holy Spirit of God as the power of God. Remember on the, when we started this topic, I said, the, power, the, the Holy Spirit of God is the power of God. There is God the Father, God the Word of God, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit of God, the power of God. The power is the one that brings to manifestation the word that God has spoken. So this is the Holy Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit of God is one, um, we have seen one of his nature, he comes like wind, fire, and the Holy Spirit of God also is the power of God. So we need to capture those three. And the reason being the Isaiah, I'm taking you now to the book of Isaiah 11 verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. What am I trying to say? When you're trying to define who the Spirit of God is, who is the Holy Spirit of God? What comprises of the Holy Spirit of God? The Spirit of the Lord, wisdom, counsel, understanding, might and knowledge, and the fear of God. There's also an additional. 2 Timothy 1.7 And God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. The fullness and completeness of the Holy Spirit of God is the Spirit of the Lord, wisdom, counsel, understanding, might and knowledge, and the fear of God, the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Now, you understand why I'm bringing you to this scripture and why I needed to define who the Holy Spirit of God, because he is, he is part and parcel of wisdom. And this part of wisdom is what has created she. And now if you can connect the dots, why we started in Genesis, when God said, let us create man, in our own image, after our own likeness. So you will see the Holy Spirit of God, part of the Holy Spirit of God of wisdom is actually the part that has created the she. And now for us to understand the she, we need to define the wisdom. And in the few scriptures that we have focused on today, you'll begin to understand who the she is, how priceless the she is how powerful the she is because she is power she is fire she is wind um when you're defining wind what is the character of wind when you're defining fire what is the character of fire when you're defining power what is the character of power and what is wisdom so as we look into the scriptures that i have given today you'll begin now to fathom or you will begin now to clearly understand the weight the depth the functionality i'm just trying to randomly pick because this topic can can really be diverse if we choose to but now i need to open up the mind your mind to clearly begin to understand that a woman can never, a she can never be limited. So anyone who tries to make a woman limited, you're actually caging something that cannot be caged. A woman, a she, a wife 
is limited, limitless. And now as we begin to understand the depth of wisdom, the depth of wind, you cannot contain wind, the depth of fire, the depth of the power. And remember now we are saying this is the God kind of power. This is the God kind of power that was taken to create a she. The woman going forward, the she going forward, because today's topic, we are not only focusing on the wife who is already married, on the woman. The woman can either be married or not married. We are focusing on the she from the young little girl, from the young adult lady, from the woman, from the wife's perspective, that the she is beyond and the mindset of the she going forward needs to begin to think beyond. Think limitless. Think you cannot be caged. You cannot be enslaved. Think wisdom. How wide is wisdom? How high is wisdom? How low is wisdom? How far can wisdom be? How broad is wisdom and this is what comprises of a she so with that few remarks this is was just um a startup i wanted to shift your mindset for a she who is feeling today let down disappointed wasted destroyed caged enslaved I, do, I may not know where you are when you're watching this video today, but this is an encouragement to you that the she is limitless. She is beyond wisdom. She is so precious. As we have read, precious than gold, precious than silver, precious than rubies, precious than any desire and God has used a man can desire. How wild can a man's, a man's mind go or wonder to desire? And you're being told as she is beyond a man's desire. So she needs to begin to realize and understand her worth, her potential, her capability. You are beyond any desire a man would desire. You are beyond. You are precious. You are limitless. We are no longer telling our young she's that the sky is the limit. You are limitless as a she. Because remember, you are created in the image to look like God and to function like God. And in closing, you are the seed. You are born of God. So with those few remarks, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. I'm so grateful for the patience. My beloved viewers, you have accorded me. Even in my absence, you continued subscribing. You continued watching. You continued telling me you need to come back and teach us more. So I am back and I'm so grateful and honored to one beautiful girl who is helping me you will know her later you will know her soon i'm so grateful for the grace that god has bestowed upon me to even resume this channel and thank you so much my wonderful beautiful viewers thank you my family my youtube family thank you for relentlessly supporting me and awaiting my return until next time on the next set it's bye-bye for now.